Are you one of those people who thinks the entire internet is just your social media feed, online shopping carts that you abandon, and videos of cats falling off of furniture? Today, I'll explain the dark web to you like you're five years old. And by the end of this, you'll finally understand the huge difference between the normal internet that you use every day and its super private, slightly spooky cousin. So let's begin with a little game. I want you to think of the entire internet. I mean, all of it as a giant ocean. A really, really big ocean. The part of the internet that you and I use every single day is called the surface web. This is the very top layer of the ocean. It's the sunny, shallow water right by the beach where everyone is splashing around, building sandcastles, and waving to each other. When you go on a search engine, that helpful little box where you type questions like, why does my back hurt? or can dogs look up? That search engine is like a friendly little lifeguard who can only see what's happening on the surface of the water. It can see all the public websites, the news articles, the blogs, the videos, and the shops. Anything that is meant to be found easily by anyone who's on the surface web. It's the public part of the internet. It's like the front yard of a house that's open for the whole neighborhood to see. It's bright, it's noisy, and it's designated for visitors. This surface web, the part that you think is the entire internet, is actually very tiny. It's maybe 5% of that whole ocean. Yeah, that's right. You've been playing in a tiny little splash pool this whole time while a massive deep ocean exists right under your feet. So, what's the rest of this giant ocean? Well, most of it is something called the deep web. Now, don't get scared. The name does sound mysterious, but it's really, really boring and you actually use it constantly. The deep web is simply all of that stuff in the ocean that's underneath the surface. It's not really dark or scary, it's just not public. You can't get to it with a simple search because it's protected. I mean, think about your email inbox. Can your neighbor just type your name into a search engine and read all of your emails? Of course not. You need a key, and that key is your username and password. Your email account is part of the deep web. Think about it like your online banking account. It's there, on the internet, but it's hidden behind a secure wall that requires your special login information. That is the deep web. Your private social media messages, your company's internal network, your streaming service account page that knows you've watched the same show five times, academic databases, medical records, and legal documents. They're all safely floating around in the deep web. It's like a whole world of private buildings in our internet city. The surface web is the public streets and parks. The deep web is all of the houses, the office buildings, and secret clubs that you just can't waltz into. You need a key card, a membership, or a secret handshake to get inside. It's not for criminals. It's for privacy. It's the biggest part of the internet by far, making up pretty much everything that isn't the surface web. So, when you log into, well, anything at all, congratulations! You're a deep web explorer. You just didn't know you had such a cool job title. It's really not a scary place. It's just your place. It's where your digital stuff lives, locked away safely from public view. It is the whole reason that the internet is useful for personal things. I mean, without the deep web, all of our information would just be out there on the beach for anyone to look at. Which would be a total disaster. Okay, so we have the sunny beach, which is a surface web. We have the huge private ocean underneath it, which is the deep web. So where in the world is the dark web? The dark web is a very, very small and very, very hidden part of the deep web. Imagine in our giant ocean, there's a super deep, dark trench at the very bottom. It's so far down that no normal boat or submarine can get to it. You can't just stumble upon it by accident. You have to know that it's there, and you need a very special kind of submarine to reach it. That is the dark web. It is intentionally and expertly hidden. It's a small little corner of the internet where everything is anonymous. The people who use it don't want to be found. The websites on it don't want to be found by normal means. Everything is designed around total, complete, and utter privacy. So, how do you get into this secret trench? I mean, you can't use your normal web browser. Your regular browser is like a shiny yellow tourist submarine with your name painted on the side. 
Every time you visit a website, that website knows your submarine's name and where it came from. Your computer has a unique address, kind of like a home address for your device. This address is how websites know where to send the data that you ask for, like pictures, texts, and videos. But on the dark web, nobody wants their address known, so people use special software to get there. The most famous one is called Tor, which stands for the Onion Router, and it works exactly like an onion. Let me explain. When you want to visit a website using Tor, it's like you're sending a secret message. First, you write your message down and put it in a lockbox. Then, you put that lockbox inside another lockbox. And then another, and another, and another. You create multiple layers, just like an onion. Then you send this multi-layered box to a random computer somewhere in the world. That computer then has the key to unlock only the outermost box. Inside, it finds instructions to send the remaining boxes to another random computer. That second computer unlocks the next layer and sends it to a third, and this pretty much happens over and over and over again, bouncing your secret message between volunteer computers all across the globe. And by the time your message gets to its final destination, the website that you want to visit, it's been passed through so many hands that no single person in the chain knows both who sent the original message and where it was ultimately going. The website you visit only sees the address of the very last computer in the chain, not yours. It's like playing a massive game of telephone with a secret note, where each person in line is in a different country and wearing a mask. This is how the dark web achieves anonymity. It hides your computer's home address by making your connection take a long, crazy, unpredictable trip around the world. This makes it almost impossible for anyone to trace your activity back to you. So, the websites on the dark web also use the same technology. Their physical location is hidden as well. Their web addresses usually end in .onion instead of .com. And now, for the big question. Why on earth would anyone want to go to a place like that? Well, the answer is complicated because total anonymity is a tool, and just like any tool, it can be used for both good things or bad things. Let's talk about the good stuff first, because it's important. In countries with oppressive governments where people can be punished for speaking freely, the dark web is a lifeline. It allows journalists, activists, and ordinary citizens to communicate with the outside world and report on what's really happening without fear of being tracked, arrested, or worse. It's a place for whistleblowers to share information about corruption without losing their jobs or their freedom. It's a tool for people who value their privacy so much that they don't want giant corporations tracking their every click to sell them stuff. For those people, the dark web isn't a scary place. It's actually a safe place. It's one of the very few places left where you can be truly anonymous and exercise your right to free speech without anyone looking over your shoulder. But of course, you can't talk about the dark web without talking about the bad stuff. Because it's anonymous, it's also a place where criminals gather. This is the part that you likely hear about in the news. There are illegal marketplaces on the dark web, sometimes called darknet markets, where people try to buy and sell all sorts of illegal things. You can find stolen data like credit card numbers or hacked accounts from big company data breaches. It's a place where illegal activities are discussed and planned because the people involved believe they can't be caught. This is the scary, criminal underbelly of the internet, and it is absolutely real. Law enforcement agencies around the world work very hard to find and shut down these operations, and sometimes they do succeed. But because of the anonymous nature of the network, when one site gets shut down, another one often pops up to take its place. It's a constant game of cat and mouse. And then there's the third category, the weird and the boring. A lot of the dark web is neither heroic nor criminal. It's just strange. You might find forums dedicated to incredibly niche hobbies. I mean, there are book clubs, chess servers, and personal blogs from people who just want to write their thoughts without attaching their real name to them. There are political discussion groups that are too extreme or unpopular for the regular internet. You'll find a whole lot of conspiracy theories and a lot of very, very private people who just don't like being tracked online. Much of it is just quiet, abandoned websites or experiments that people set up and forgot about. It's not all high-stakes journalism or criminal empires. I mean, a lot of it is just a quiet, dusty, and sometimes bizarre attic of the internet. 
Now, let's clear up a couple of things. Is it illegal to just go on the dark web? In most countries? No. Simply downloading and using a tool like the Tor browser isn't against any law. It's a privacy tool. What is legal, though, is what you do there. It's a lot like owning a kitchen knife. You can use it to chop vegetables for a lovely salad, which is perfectly fine. Or you could do something terrible with it. I mean, the knife itself isn't illegal. The illegal act is. The same logic applies to the dark web. Simply visiting is one thing. But participating in illegal markets is another thing entirely. Also, it's not as easy to use as the regular internet. Because your connection is bouncing all over the world, it can be very, very slow. And because there's no central search engine like Google for the dark web, finding anything is difficult. I mean, you often need to know the exact .onion address of the site that you want to visit, which you might get from a forum or a directory. It's not a place you just casually browse like you do on the surface web. So, the internet is like a big ocean. The surface web is the sunny beach where everyone can see you and search engines know where everything is. The deep web is everything under the water, like your private online bank account or your email inbox, a massive and mostly safe area that just needs a password key to enter. And the dark web is the super duper secret trench at the very bottom of the ocean, a small and hidden place that you need a special anonymous submarine like Tor to even find, where people go when they absolutely do not want to be found. See, you get it now. It's not some magic ghost dimension from a scary movie. It's just a part of the internet built with layers and layers of privacy, used by heroes, criminals, and very private people alike. It is a powerful tool for anonymity in a world that seems to watch our every move. But now, you know the secret. So go on, explain it to your friends. I mean, you're basically an expert now. You're welcome.